Hey everyone, today I'd like to quickly talk about reference cells and the dollar sign in sheets. So let's get into it. So for example, in this range here, we're not going to look at this range for now, but in this range here, you want to multiply 100 times your 1, then times your 2, and 3, and 4, and so on. So what you decide to do is equals, click on your 100, and then times, and then click on your 1, enter. Then you have that one and then you think I'm going to drag this all across to get the same function all the way but what you don't realize is that your 100 is dragged over as well as your 1 2 3 4 5 6 what I mean by that is in the first function you're doing 100 times 1 you drag it over and now you're doing this cell b1 times your 2 and so on c1 times 3 and keep going but what you want is to have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 drag, but have the 100 stay, stay stationary. So this is where the dollar sign comes into play. You don't want to affect A2 because you want A2 to drag over to B2 and then to C2 and then to D2. But you'll see that A1 becomes B1 and C1 and D1 but you want that A to stay as A. So you can put a dollar sign in front of the A in this function, and that means that it will stay referenced to column A. You could also put the dollar sign in front of one, meaning that it will stay in row one, but since the row isn't changing anyways, you don't have to do that. So let me just show you for an example how this will make it different. So I'm going to hit enter, and now when I drag it across, you will get the 100 times 1, 100 times 2, times 3, 4, 5, 6. And you'll see that the A stays, but for uh, the second part, it changes from A2 to B2 to C2. But A1 stays constant because you put the dollar sign in there as a reference. Now this can also work when you want the row to stay the same. In another example, we'll do equals 100 times 1, and you get 100. Then when you drag it down, both parts drag down. So you get 100 times 1 in the first one, then you drag it down, and now you're getting 1 times 2, and then 2 times 3, and 3 times 4, and that's not what you want. So we're going to do the same thing we did in the first part except we're going to put the dollar sign in front of the 5 as we want the row to stay the same. Now when we drag it down, we'll get 1 times 100, 2 times 100, 3 times 100, and we'll get the correct results. And if you scroll over all the functions, you'll notice that that cell A5 stays the same. Now, like I said earlier, you can also put the dollar sign in front of both the A and the 5 if you wanted to drag across rows and columns. Sometimes that's helpful, but it's very annoying when you drag your function all the way across and then realize that it becomes messed up and then you have to use the dollar sign. So it's definitely a useful tool. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you do, a like would be much appreciated. Also, a comment as to what you learned or what you still have questions about would also be appreciated. And as always, please subscribe. Thank you.